The gentleman from Wisconsin is recognized. Thank you. Thank you. Um, a couple of comments. Uh, the chairman of the Federal Reserve, Powell, uh, commented recently on the state of the economy, state of debt. Um, could you comment on his remarks? Would it have any effect on future proposals from President Biden as far as the amount we spend? We, I'm sorry, so I, I, I missed that. Well, 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 the comments of Chairman Powell yeah. have any effect on, you think, on the type of budgets being proposed by President Biden in the future? Uh, I mean, it, it seems like the Fed is staying out of fiscal policy. So it doesn't, it, it just, it doesn't seem like there's that going to be an impact. W weren't there si kind of some cautionary uh, mm -hmm. statements made by, by Chairman Powell? Oh. Um, I mean, I, he talked in his last press conference about the unsustainability of- Unsustainable, I would say that's a, ju a judgment call. And, and what, did, what did you take out of him saying our current path is unsustainable? I mean, I think that message matches ours, that action needs to be taken to avoid um, you know, the problems arising from the fiscal, uh, fiscal crisis. Right, and that fiscal crisis is caused by a deficit, right? That's right, deficit and mounting debt, that's right. Okay, okay. Um, you, so do you anticipate spending less on mandatory and discretionary spending because of his comments or concerns that you share with him? Uh, no, I mean, no, you know, like I said, the Fed, my interpretation is the Fed is really staying, you know, out of fiscal policy. Well, I don't know if that's the way I'd look at it. We have a lot of people coming here right now, and the high cost of housing is something that will destroy the middle class for the next generation unless something is done. Uh, I think we had at least 370,000 people come into this country uh, in December. When I talk to my local landlords or developers, even as far away as Wisconsin, they see a growing number of apartments filling up with people who are sometimes should be viewed as illegals. Um, do you feel, and apparently you wanted to stick your nose in the housing market, at least in response to past questions, um, what effect do you think having this huge number of person coming in the country so quickly will have on the cost of housing, availability of apartments, that sort of thing? Oh, yeah. No, it's, um, it's um, uh, it, it, it definitely an impact. That, as you said, the increased immigration means an increase in, in the demand for housing. You know, initially the new immigrants tend to live with family and friends, well, 370,000 is a lot. Yes, there, there are examples of people with, you know, eight people in an apartment or something. That's right. But still, when you have 370,000 people, new people show up in a month, that's in addition to the people who are coming here, you know, the legal pathway, mm -hmm. uh, it creates a housing shortage, right? I mean, that's what my landlords are telling me. No, over, yeah, over time, the increased demand for housing will lead to higher, higher prices and higher rents. Higher prices and higher rents. That's exactly right. Uh, does that concern you? Do you think in any case you might begin to prevent all these people coming across the border to prevent housing going outside the abilities of our young people? No, that, it's a challenge for families. The affordable it's a affordable challenge. Family. That's what it is. It's a challenge for you if you want to start out and raise a family, right? It's a challenge when the cost of housing goes up. No, that's right. Do you know how much housing has gone up, say, in the last two or three years, percentage-wise, both housing and rents? Uh, I don't know, but it, it, right now it's a key driver of our continued inflation. Right, it is a key driver. That's true. That's true. Um, as far as you, you, you mentioned that some people, some corporations don't pay taxes, uh, there's been an increased use of tax credits mm -hmm. to do what I think historically is done by spending money. I'm thinking of the green tax credits. I'm thinking of the low-income housing tax credits, which... Mm -hmm. I think benefit primarily, um, oh, um, um, property developers, maybe a little bit benefits people with lower incomes as well. Uh, do you think that you may be amenable to getting rid of some of these tax credits so on their tax returns some of these big corporations can begin to pay a little bit more? Uh, it's. Um it's a key challenge for tax policy is the complexity of the code and the, you know, the, the incentives that, that, um, that gives rise to. It's, it's a, you know, I can't, I can't recommend policy or not, but I, I acknowledge, I would say that yes. You acknowledge that one of the reasons people don't pay taxes is we have 
generous tax credits. Tax credits no, that's right. That's a, it, it leads to complexity and has yep. I want to get on one more question before I, I hang up here. One of the complaints I get for employers, and of course we're always looking for more people to work, is that it currently seems to be we pay people not to work, okay? Be it you can't work harder, you lose your Social Security. You can't work harder, you lose your low-income housing benefit. You can't work harder unless you lose your health care benefit. Uh, do you feel all these programs conditioned upon not working too hard, and they're all conditioned to a degree on working less, do you think that uh, is a little bit of a drag on the American economy, paying all these people to not work? Yeah, I mean, there are incentive effects of... Overwhelming, baby. Aren't there a lot of incentives in our society not to work, or at least not to work too hard? And that, you know, and that affects participation, it affects the labor force, and it affects the economy. Good. Well, we can work on that in the next budget. Okay, thank you.